Okay, in previous videos we were looking at the Pogo Plug Mobile. Now here I have a standard size Pogo Plug. This is a Pogo Plug Pro, it's black. Uh, you might have a pink one. But I'm going to show you how to take this apart, how to connect this to your port, and also some other ways to get root shells on this device. Uh, so now, again, uh, by default when you hook this up and you um, create an account on the Pogo Plug website, there should be an option that sometimes shows up to create a password and enable SSH on this. That does not always seem to work. Um, so getting to the serial port is one way of doing, uh, another way of doing that. So let's go ahead, and the way this comes apart is uh, you slide off this case here, and then you just apply a little pressure and pop off this case here. Be careful when you pull it off because the antenna, because this particular one uh, has Wi-Fi on it, uh, has an antenna there, so I guess if you have a model that doesn't have Wi-Fi, that probably wouldn't be there. Just be careful because the antenna is just taped to the top there. Um, and then here you can see that this model has the power supply uh, right here in the unit itself. It also has a uh, SATA port, so you could actually hook up a hard drive internally here. But right here, you'll see that we have a little connector pin. So right here, you can see we have four pins sticking up. And if I remember correctly, I believe we have uh, the three volt pin, which you wouldn't use, transmit, receive, and ground. And um, this type of connector, for those of you who are really young may not know this, but back in the day when you had a CD-ROM drive on your computer and you wanted to play an audio CD, it didn't play it through the data cable. You actually had audio cables that went directly from the uh, CD-ROM drive to your sound card, and the CD-ROM drive would just play the audio through that way, where nowadays it actually basically decodes the file as if you were listening to like a WAV file or something of uh, that nature. Um, it really sucked because if your sound card only had one plug on it and you had two CD-ROM drives, you can only listen to, the, to audio CDs in one of those drives. Anyway, the reason I bring that up is because that is that type of connector. And I'm not actually sure what that connector's called. If you have an old computer that's probably, you know, older than 2005, maybe even you know older than that, you should be able to pull uh, that cable out of there and use it to connect to these uh, connectors here, which I did, and then I lost that cable. Um, so that's why I'm going to show you a different way to get in today. But if you want to hook up to serial, these are your pins here, and you just have to connect to them. So either uh, you know access them from the other side of the board or somehow get little connectors on that pin. It's a little more difficult than than the Pogo Plug Mobile, which just had pads that I was able to solder onto. Um, but that is your serial port connection there. So now I put the case back together, and I'm going to hook in our network cable and plug in the power. So at this point, again, if I was to show you, if you want to connect to the serial port, it's the same procedure after you connect those pins as we did with the mobile. So now I'm going to show you another way to get a shell uh, from the Pogo plug by exploiting a vulnerability in the Pogo plug. Okay, so we know that we can enable SSH by supposedly going to the Pogo Plug website after creating an account for our Pogo Plug. And we also know that we can get a, a uh, root connection, a root shell using the serial port, and at that point we can enable SSH or Telnet or whatever, whatever services we want. Uh, well, there's actually a vulnerability uh, inside the Pogo Plug that makes it pretty easy to do pretty much anything to it without having to rely on the services because the Pogo plug is actually already running a web server. And if I quickly end map, so I've already, I already know the IP address of my local network for my Pogo plug uh, is this, and I'm going to end map it. Now you'll see that I already have SSH enabled. That's because I've already enabled it, uh, but I forgot the password. So I'm going to show you how to use this vulnerability. You could use it to enable SSH, but I'm also going to use it to, to gain access to the device and run other commands so I can change my password. So normally when you run this without SSH, you wouldn't see this SSH, but you'll see port 80 for HTTP and uh, 443 for HTTPS. So let's go ahead and just go to our web browser here and put in the IP address and hit enter and you can see it's going to say the page is not working properly. That's because there's no there's no um, root index there, but it is a web server and if you know where the files are on the system, you know how to get to them. So all I have to do is instead of just doing the IP address, I'm going to do forward slash and again there's notes in the description of this video uh, with all this information in there. Uh, and you can see I've typed this in before. Uh, we're actually just going to go uh, forward slash and so 
It's the IP address, forward slash, and remember this is case sensitive, S-Q-D-I-A-G, forward slash, capital B, capital G, capital Q, U-E, U-E. Enter, and it's going to ask for a username and password. And the default username and password for the Pogo plugin, even if you've changed it on the S on the um, the uh, the SSH for the actual root user, it doesn't change it for the web interface here. So we're going to say the username is root, and the password is all lowercase C E admin. So C E A D M I N, and hit enter, and you're going to be brought to this little interface here, a diagnostic tool that is on the Pogo plug. So anyone who knows this is a Pogo plug, which is very easy to check, because uh, if I go back here, and if I run an ARP scan on my entire network here, which is gonna quickly just look at all my uh, uh, connections on my network here, and I need to type in my password to do that, uh, you'll see that I have two running, because I have my regular Pogo plug here, and I also have this one that we just hooked up, and Based on the MAC address, it's very easy to see if it says Cloud Engines. So anyone scanning your network sees, oh, Cloud Engines, it's probably a Pogo plug. I can use this vulnerability, which is a good reason in the previous videos we showed you how to disable uh, their services if you're not going to use them. Might be a good idea. So anyway, we have this interface, and there's a number of things here. And I come to uh, DropBear, which is our SSH server, if you've watched the previous videos in this uh, playlist. Uh, you can see I, I've already enabled it and the password is set, but I don't know what that password is. Out of all these options, and you can go through them and there's a lot of diagnostic tools, but if I go to this HB plug, it's a place where I can execute commands, but I'm going to get an error when I go to it. It says, diagnostic only available over HTTPS. So all I have to do is come to the beginning of this and type in HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash. Now when I hit enter, it's going to give me... Um, this, that's not the right error. Oh, let's see. Okay, uh, Chrome was working before, but now it seems to be having trouble with the certificates doing the SSH, uh, uh, or yeah, the S, uh, HTTPS. So let's go ahead and, and give it a try in um, Firefox here. So it's gonna be HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash the IP address of your plug uh, then it's going to be forward slash uh, sqdiag forward slash, uh, and we'll just go back to bgq uh, ue ue. And again, that's case sensitive, and all this is in the notes of the in the description. Uh, and it's going to tell us, and this is this is normal. It's going to tell us that we cannot make a secure connection because it it doesn't have a, a domain address. We're connecting IP, so it's saying, oh, you know, the security certificate isn't authentic, uh, can't be authentic, uh, authenticated. Blah. Just go to advanced, and the same thing would happen in Chrome. And then usually you can say uh, continue, uh, add exception. I guess in this case, uh, confirm security exception, and then it's going to ask you for your password again. So we're going to say root. CE admin, all lowercase. And there you go. We're now at that same interface we were at before, but now we're connected through a using uh, encryption, but it's, it's not the most secure way of doing things. Anyway, we're gonna go to this HB plug section here. And when you go here, there's not gonna be anything there. What we're going to add to this is we're gonna say question mark, and we're gonna say, action equals command. And again, you can do you should be able to do this in any web browser. And now we can issue commands. Any command we want and it will run. So, for example, let's start up a telnet uh, server. Now, in the previous videos I showed you how to set up telnet a telnet server and you would log in using your na username and password. But if you do telnet uh, D, so the telnet daemon, and you do dash L and then give it a command. It's going to start a telnet server. When you connect, it's going to run wherever this command is. So we're going to just say SH, saying that we want to connect. When we connect, start up a shell. And we're going to execute that. Everything seemed to go fine. Let's go back to our shell here and let's try to telnet into our pogo plug and again because we set it up that way we don't need to put in the username and password I can go ahead and hit enter and it drops me straight to a shell and at this point uh, I should be able to 
change the root password. And I'll just change it to something super secret, something very short. And it said it was changed. Now I should be able to exit out and I should be able to SSH back in. But now if you watch my previous videos in this series, uh, there's a problem in that the current um, client, the bear drop or drop bear on the pogo plugs is kind of old. And if we try to connect to it, just like this, SSH roots and give it the IP address. It's going to say that the, the, the key exchange uh, method doesn't work because it's using an older uh, method. Now we can force it to by using this command. Let's see if we can shrink that down to one line. Again, all these notes are in the links in the description. So SSH dash lowercase o uh, kex algorithm equals and just basically all this. And it's just saying, yeah, the server's using SHA-1. We know it's not that secure. Connect to it anyway. And when I hit enter, it's going to ask for the password, which I just changed, and I should be able to connect. And now I'm connected, uh, encrypted, rather than with the telnet. So, and if I PS uh, out here, you can see drop bear running, and uh, we should also see telnet running right there, telnet. So let's go ahead and kill that, because that's very unsecure now. Not only is it not encrypted, but anybody connect to it without a username and password. So we're going to say kill that process. We'll check and make sure it was killed. Uh, and so there you go. Now, be sure to check out the previous videos in this series where I go over a lot more detail because basically at this point, you have yourself a Pogo plug, just like the Pogo plug mobile. Uh, everything else should work the same. So you can go and compile a new version of Drop Bear so you don't have to use the SHA-1. And uh, I go over other things like, um, you know, uh, what, what else did I go over in the previous videos? Watch all the previous videos. Uh, I think I go over how the how to get the LED to flash different colors um, on the box, uh, how to upgrade BusyBox so you have more tools on there, how to remount the the file system as re write, read write so you can change stuff. I can't talk properly today. And again, uh, remember that the PogoPlug service is running on here, so those vulnerabilities of anybody knowing uh, that you're running a PogoPlug and is on your network can now uh, run commands uh, through a web browser like this. Oh, I should show you how to do it from the shell. It's basically the same exact thing. So um, let's go ahead. So we've killed our SSH or our Telnet client. If I exit out and I end map, you can see that Telnet is no longer running. So let's go ahead and get it running from the shell. Here's a command, I'm just gonna copy and paste it here. So we're just gonna use curl, so obviously you have to have curl installed. And it's doing the same thing we're doing in the web browser. So this command is actually, we're saying curl, which is a shell uh, tool for downloading stuff, you know, from the web, uh, dash K, and we're going to say HTTPS, and then here we're gonna pass it the username and password right in the URL, that's one way of doing it. So we're saying root CE admin at, and we're giving it the IP address, the same URL that we gave before, and then here, this is the command to start SSH. So again, I already had SSH running, I just forgot the password. If you wanna start SSH, you go ahead and run that command but you can put any command in here. So let's go ahead and add our telnet command. So again, it's telnet D, uh, and then we're gonna say dash L S H. And when we hit enter, we're gonna get the, the HTML from that web page. but it doesn't matter if we do nmap again, we should see telnet is now running. And again, the way we ran it, we can connect to it without any user, or what did I? Oh, maybe you have to put a plus symbol. So we did start a Telnet client, but we didn't start it uh, the way that we wanted to. Let's go ahead and add to this. Let's go plus dash P, and I'll just say 3333. Does it have to be a space there? I think there does. So basically I'm replacing the spaces with plus signs, because I think that will do it properly. So let's now uh, net and map again. And there we go, we have Telnet running on, on port uh, 333. So let's go ahead and connect to that. There we go. So yeah, so if you're gonna issue commands uh, this way, you either need to, as in the drop bear example, 
which I didn't actually enter. Uh, you're either going to use percent twenty, which is saying space, or you can do a plus sign. Can depends on what you're doing here. Either should work, but there might be some cases where one works better than the other. Uh, but if you've done any type of uh, HTTP request, that's all we're doing here is an HTTP request, uh, and we're issuing it and we're giving it the username and password here. So yeah. So it's a vulnerability in the fact that it is password protected, but if you, if it's still using the default, and I'm not sure how to change the username and password for the Pogo plug uh, client, uh, their software running on there. I'm not sure if you can, because uh, we've changed it for root as far as the root user on the system, but obviously their web interface, uh, it's it, it might be embedded, who knows, in their executable, <laughs> hopefully not. Uh, but maybe so. I hope that I uh, talked clearly today because I feel like I was stumbling over my words, but it's pretty straightforward. Again, there's notes in the description of this video, a link to the notes on Pastebin. Uh, and I hope you watched the previous videos in this series because they, they go over a lot more with the Poco plug. And I didn't want this to be a repeat video with just different hardware. So I thought I'd show you this other way of accessing uh, commands on the Pogo plug. Now, uh, go ahead, buy yourself a Pogo plug. Again, you can get them. On, I'm not, again, not getting paid to say this. The, the, many other models, if not all of them, have been discontinued, so you can get them for under $10, at least the mobile ones and the, the, the larger ones like we're working with today. Last I checked, when I bought my last one, it was only $15 to $20, and I'm betting they're probably cheaper now. And you have yourself a full Linux server running. So I thank you for watching. Don't want this video to go too long. I hope that you have a great day. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with K. There's a link in the description. Again, with also links to the notes in the description. And also, if you like my videos, think about supporting me over at patreon.com forward slash mailx1000. There's a link to that in the description as well. Or if you go to filmsbychris.com, there's a link to the Patreon page and also a link to uh, my PayPal if you want to make uh, donations that way. I do appreciate the support. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.